I build dream machines. I start out with a half a ton of aluminum, about a quarter of a ton of steel, maybe a couple hundred yards of stainless steel cable. And I take all of these materials and I cut them into little bitty pieces. And then I put them back together again into one great big dream machine. And we use that dream machine to teach people how to fly. That dream machine, the flying trapeze rig, allows everyday humans the opportunity to experience flight. Now this is something that humans have dreamed about for millennia. We've always wanted to be able to fly. We've watched birds. We've loved the idea of being in the air. And now, because of these machines, we can do that. Now, many people, when they see a flying trapeze rig for the first time, the first thing that comes to mind is the stories that we've been told since we were young that the people that fly in the flying trapeze are daring and death-defying, and that the tricks are dangerous. And there's some element of that that might be true. But what I do with my dream machines is I build a safe place for people to experience flying on the flying trapeze. Now, the flying trapeze was originally built by Jules Leotard in 1859 in France. And over the years since, people have been flying and swinging and learning to do new tricks on the trapeze. What we do with my team of people is we teach people of all ages, from six to 80, how to do simple tricks and how to do complex tricks on the flying trapeze. Now, Everybody that flies on the flying trapeze has a little bit different experience. I have to say that when I first saw a flying trapeze, I was mesmerized. I've always liked climbing on things, and I've always liked jumping off of things, and it seemed like a natural extension of that. My mom tells a story about when I was about 20 months old. She didn't hear me. That was not a good thing. She went looking for me, and she found me climbing up the banister on the outside of the staircase in the hallway. And I was up to the top, and I was looking down and having a lovely time, and she screamed, and I kind of freaked out, and I fell down and bounced off the hutch, and then landed in a pile of boots. So I wasn't hurt, really. And I got up and started to do it again. She wasn't very keen on that. So since then, I've climbed and jumped on everything that I can. And when I first found the flying trapeze rig, that became the thing for me. Now, what we do here is we teach everybody how to fly in the flying trapeze rig that way. So typically, you'll, feel, you'll, you'll start your first experience on the flying trapeze rig by walking up to the ladder. And you'll put your hands on the ladder, and you'll climb up, and you'll find yourself two and a half stories above the ground. And you'll look down at the ground, and you'll see the net, and then the ground down beyond it. Now, a lot of people are a little nervous when they're two and a half stories above the ground. And that's understandable. But we always have a team of people working with all of our trapeze flyers. We have a person on the ground holding onto the spotting lines, keeping them safe like a mountain climber's belayer. We have a person on the board holding onto their safety belt and keeping them from falling forward. The whole team's job is to keep people safe while they're learning to fly on the trapeze. So after you look down, you take a breath, or maybe several, and then you look out down the trapeze rig, and you'll see the catch trap, the second trapeze, way out at the end of the rig, where the catcher flies later on. You'll see the trapeze bar in front of you, and the person who's holding your belt, keeping you on the trapeze board, on the pedestal board, they'll ask you to reach out a hand and hold on to that trapeze bar. Now the trapeze bar is about three feet long, weighs about 12 pounds, not very big or very heavy. But when you're standing 25 feet off the ground and you reach out for it, it feels like it's a mile away the first time. And there's a person holding your safety belt and calming you and telling you that you can reach out and hold that bar. And then they'll have you put the other hand, your free hand on the bar, so that you have both hands on the flying trapeze bar. And they'll look at you and they'll say, are you ready? 
And you'll say, yes, I've been dreaming of this my whole life. <laughs> Sometimes. And you'll take a breath and you'll step off into space. John Burroughs, a 19th century naturalist, said, leap and the net will appear. He may have seen leotard, actually. He was talking about the idea of having faith in yourself, about believing in your own abilities, about the support of your community. When you take that first step off the pedestal board and you're flying through the air, you feel gravity in a way you may have never experienced it before. As you swing down through the bottom of the swing, you're approaching nearly two Gs of force on your body. You feel it in your shoulders. You feel it in your hands. You're not sure if you can hold on, actually. You can feel your heart beating a lot. Then you swing up in the front of the swing. And as you swing towards the front of the swing, an amazing thing happens. As you get towards the top, to that point in time where you're not going up or coming down, where you're at the very end of the swing, you're weightless. And in that weightless moment, all of the fears that you've been carrying, all of the things you've been worrying about, fall away. And you're flying. And then you drop back down again. And you feel the swing backwards. And you want the freedom again of, of floating in the air. And you get it at the back of the swing. Because at this point in time, you're like the pendulum on a grandfather clock. You swing back and forth. That is an amazingly powerful feeling. The work that we do in our social circus work with the Circus of Hope in Austin, Texas, and here close to home with the Youth Recovery Theater, which is a part of the Hilltown Youth Theater, we bring kids from the age of five up until about 18 into our programs, and we teach them how to fly in the trapeze. So we put them into an environment where all of the people present on the trapeze team, the person pulling lines, the catcher, the person on the board helping them take off, everybody's only goal is to help them succeed. Now, for some of our kids, that's not something they've experienced very often. And it gives them an opportunity to experience a shift in their reality. They can learn to succeed in a way that they may never have dreamed was possible before. And that change, giving them the opportunity to fly, changes their self-perspective. It changes their perspective of other people about them. I love that part. It's fabulous. We take all of the kids that we work with and we teach them how to fly. And it starts by having them climb up to the pedestal board. And they can look down and they can see somebody on their safety lines holding onto them, taking care of them. They can feel the person holding their belt, helping them get ready to fly. And then they take off. And you see them swing through the air and you see the joy in their faces. Usually joy, sometimes fear, mostly joy. And they swing through the air. And we're trying to usually get them to learn to do a knee hang, a simple trick. Many of us have hung upside down by our knees on the playground off of something. It's a little different 25 feet in the air, but it's not much different. Same idea. They swing through the air. We have them put their legs up on the trapeze bar. And they look forward to where the catcher will be later. And they expand their world a little bit more because they've learned that they can do a thing even when they're afraid. They've learned that they can do a thing with the support of their group and with the team and with everybody around them. We have them reach out, practicing to be caught, even when we're not getting caught, reaching out towards the future, reaching out towards where the catcher will be later. And in each of these swings and all of this, we're building up to the point in time where we can make a choice as a group to work together and get caught. Now, sometimes getting caught on the flying trapeze is very close. Other times it's a little bit further away. 
But when you've worked with the group and you swing across to the catcher and the catcher's only goal in life at that moment is to reach out and take your hands and bring you across, that kind of support and that kind of environment is wonderful. Now, once we've caught people, actually, whether you get caught or not, all of the swings that you have, all of the swings that you take, end with a drop to the net. Now, our team works to build a net of safety and inclusion and emotional support for our students. We have the physical net, of course. We've seen the picture of that. But it's not the only net that we have. The net that we build as a group, the support that we build as a group, allows our students to express themselves in ways that they may have never dreamed possible because they know that we believe in them and we help them believe in themselves. Now, one of the ways we use my trapeze rig to express ourselves is this, uh, we use it as a prop piece in our shows. Last year, we decided to do a show based on the story of Peter Pan. So we dressed up my trapeze rig as a pirate ship. The good rig Jolly Roger, Captain Hook's ship. And using that ship, using that trapeze rig as the basis for our process, we taught 70 people, 70 kids, how to fly, how to catch. We crewed the ship with people who all experienced that shift in reality that comes with the joy of flight. And by the end of the summer, we had the rig up for about a month working with all of the participants. By the end of the summer, we had people who were flying above the bar, they were flying below the bar, we were catching people doing tricks they never would have believed was possible. And through all of that, we were building community, we were changing the way the kids looked at themselves, the way they looked at each other. We were teaching people how to function even when they were afraid. Now, a lot of people, when they fly in the trapeze, they're a little bit nervous. But they learn that you can work through the nervousness and that even when you're afraid, you can still function. So that means that in your day-to-day -day life, if you experience anxiety about something, you know, I've flown on the trapeze. If I can get caught on the trapeze, I can do anything, right? So over the course of the training that we do, we teach people to fly. And eventually, they learn quite a bit about themselves. They use the trapeze rig as a tool to expand their world. And we use it as a tool to expand our world as well. And they learn to fly. And they learn to work together. And they learn to believe in themselves. And eventually, if you keep flying on the trapeze, you do learn a lot about yourself. And it's possible that at some point, with practice and diligence, that you can learn to fly without the safety lines. When you have reached the point where you can fly without the safety lines, you have the support of the community, you have the support of the net, you know that everything's there, and then you're flying. I think that Leonardo da Vinci probably said it the best. Once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been, and there you will always long to be. Thank you.